Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video today, we are going to be talking about the blood flow through the kidney. And I really think this video is important for you guys, specifically to really understand how blood goes from the heart all the way to the kidney and then back to the heart. So if you do like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and then check out NinjaNerd.org. That's where we have all of our illustration and notes for all these videos here on YouTube, and I really think it's beneficial for you guys to check them out and utilize them so you can study and get those A pluses on all those exams. Let's get started. So with the blood flow through the kidney, I really think it's important to understand this. Uh, one, because I had a professor when I was in anatomy and physiology, and what they did is they always said, you need to be able to trace a little drop of blood from the heart to the kidney or the heart to the tip of your toe or the heart to your brain. And I think it's important to understand those vessels and how the blood is flowing so that way we can get a better understanding of what really goes in and what are all the areas that there could be potential breakdown or interruption for that blood flow. So real quick, this is gonna be a quick video, short one going over, how do we get from the heart to the kidney back to the heart? So. Let's start really quickly. We're looking at the heart. If we remember basics right here, we're in the right atria, right ventricle, right? Go out to the lung, come back through the left atria, left ventricle, and we're gonna go out. As we go out of the heart, we come out, we exit through the aorta, right? So this is our aorta here. This is our descending aorta, or also known as abdominal aorta. From there is where we start to enter the kidney, right? So we have this vessel right here, our renal artery. Our renal artery is going to flow into the kidney. As it flows into the kidney, we have right here our segmental artery. And as our segmental artery starts to break off and go in between the lobes here, we have that vessel called our what? Our interlobar. So our interlobar artery in between our lobes, right? Let's go back really quick. We have our descending aorta, has a break off our renal artery going into our kidney. That breaks into our segmental artery, and then it goes up in between the lobes here in our interlobar artery. From there, we have what? We have the vessel coming and starting to arch around the top here, right? As it starts to arch around the top, we have a vessel here called our arcuate artery. And you're gonna see the arcuate artery starts to then send off these shoots that are kind of going out, right? They're pushing out. I always think of like rays of the sun, you know, back in like preschool when you would draw it and you'd be like, this is a sun, and you draw these little rays. These little rays here are radiating into our cortex, right? So what do we call these vessels here? These ones that are shooting all off? These are our cortical, because they're going to the cortex, radiate artery, right? So, what did we just say? Renal artery goes into the segmental artery, goes into the interlobar arteries, to our arcuate arteries, as so they start to arc, into our cortical radiate, right? Once we're at our cortical radiate artery, they're sending off these really small vessels here. What is the name for the smallest type of artery? That's arterial, and this is our afferent arterial. This afferent arterial goes into this nice little capillary bed here. Capillary bed that looks like this nice big ball of yarn. That is our what? Glomerulus. We do have an exchange there of particles, right? And, and really, really small substances, okay? But we don't have an exchange of gas. So what that means is from our glomerulus, we still have an arterial after. So as it exits, you can see it exiting here, the glomerulus, our efferent arterial. Once we exit the glomerulus, go through our efferent arterial, we eventually start having these really small vessels that are wrapping around this nephron, right? This is another capillary bed. So as these vessels start to wrap around the nephron, 
we call these our peritubular capillaries or the capillaries that are around and near our nephron. So here we have our peritubular capillaries. Right? So now we have had gas exchange. Right? So now we have had gas exchange. And because of that, we are now going into our veins, right? So peritubular capillaries, they start to flow back in to this vessel right here, which is also this vessel right here. And this is our cortical radiate vein. From here, we have this arching, right? This arching vessel, which is we talked about before is our arcuate vein. It goes down in between to our interlobar vein. Eventually starts flowing out through our renal vein, right? And then we go into this big vessel that's gonna lead from our abdominal and our dependent portion of our body up to our heart. What is that? Our inferior vena cava, or IVC. Up, back into our right atrium, and we start the cycle all over again. So, you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute. You missed something here. No, I did not. There's no segmental vein, so just keep that in mind. It's just interlobar straight back into our renal vein, okay? So I think it's really important to understand, or maybe write down, this in order, right? You could sit there and write it in order, and that way, if you get stuck in an area, you could say, oh, I remember this vein. What's after that? Quick, jot it down, put it through some words, and then you're going to be like, okay, now I remember where I'm at. So I want to run through it one more time before we wrap up this video. We're at our heart. The blood is going from our inferior vena cava, right, into our right atrium, right ventricle, out to our lungs, back to our left atria, left ventricle, up, out through the aorta. So far, so good, right? As we get through our descending aorta, we go through our renal artery. Renal artery flows into the segmental. Segmental flows into the interlobar. Interlobar goes through the arcuate. Arcuate goes to those cortical radiate arteries, right? Those cortical radiate arteries that are radiating out throw off these real little arterioles, our afferent arterioles. Some glomerulus filtration capillary occurs, goes through our efferent arteriole, through our peritubular capillaries. Now right here is where they might throw in a little bonus question or something on your exam. What is the name for a peritubular capillary if it's in the medulla and it's not in the cortex? It's the vasa recta, if you forgot. So there may be a little offshoot here where you can also say peritubular capillaries or the vasa recta, depending on what kind of nephron we're looking at. So gas exchange occurs here, the peritubular capillaries. We're gonna to go to the cortical radiate vein as we start to come back in. Our cuet vein, down through our interlobar vein, out through our renal vein, and then up the IVC. And then that is how we follow blood flow through the kidney. So I hope that made sense, engineers. I hope you learned something. And I hope this exam that you're quickly studying for or just refreshing right before, this, is gonna, this video is making you feel so much better about that exam that you're about to go into. Good luck with everything. And as always, until next time.